Using data from 2,000 CAT scans of his mummy and other research material, a BBC show in 2014 came up with an updated view of an enduring mystery. What killed the ancient Egyptian king Tutankhamun? But it was the image that the program makers created of what the legendary pharaoh probably looked like that deeply shocked viewers. That's because it's a representation that clashes harshly with the beauty of Tutankhamun's funerary artifacts. King Tutankhamun ruled some 34 centuries ago, from about 1332 BC to 1323 BC, during the period of ancient Egyptian history that academics call the New Kingdom. He came to the throne aged about 9 or 10 after the death of his father, Akhenaten. Tutankhamun's mother was most likely Akhenaten's sister or cousin. At that time, members of the Egyptian royal family normally married siblings or close relatives. Eminent French Egyptologist Marc Gabold believes that Tutankhamun's mother was Nefertiti, Akhenaten's cousin. In any case, the truth about exactly who Tutankhamun's mother was remains unresolved after 3,400 years. But we do know that Tutankhamun carried on the pharaonic tradition of sibling unions by marrying his own half-sister and Kes and Amun. The couple had two stillborn daughters whose mummified fetuses were probably buried with their father. Since Tutankhamun was just a child when he ascended to the throne, we can only assume that there must have been influential figures who actually ran the affairs of the state. It seems that one General Horemeb took the position of Lord of the Land, while Grand Vizier I was a powerful man who was to succeed Tutankhamun. During his reign, Tutankhamun rolled back some of the religious reforms that his father had instigated. He initiated a program of building works to glorify the god Amun, in contrast to his father, who had favored another Egyptian deity, Aten. He also gave up his original name, Tutankhamun, to become Tutankhamun, meaning living image of Amun. Tutankhamun's reign was cut short by his death about 1323 BC, when the young pharaoh was aged only about 18. He was then buried in an extravagantly decorated and furnished tomb in the Valley of the Kings. And it's the discovery of that tomb in the 20th century that's made Tutankhamun possibly the best known of all Egyptian pharaohs despite his relatively short reign. It was the British Egyptologist and archaeologist Howard Carter who discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, a tomb known to academics as the distinctly unglamorous KV-62. Carter had been working in Egypt excavating ancient sites since 1891 when he was only 17. His discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, with its extravagantly lavish burial goods, made him a household name. What was particularly outstanding about Tutankhamun's tomb was not that it was unusually lavish. In fact, by the standards of Egyptian royalty, it was relatively modest. But it had largely escaped the attention of looters over the centuries, so it was uniquely intact. And it was a last gasp discovery for Carter, since his sponsor, Lord Carnivon, had become disillusioned with a lack of significant finds and had told Carter that this would be his last season of funding for excavation. But on November 26, 1922, with Lord Carnivon in attendance and using a chisel that had been a 17th birthday present from his grandmother, Carter made the first break in the door of the tomb. Once inside the tomb, the sheer opulence of Tutankhamun's last resting place soon became apparent to Carter, Carnivon, and others. It was filled with extraordinary artifacts that were lying around in heaps. Presumably, they had been disturbed by the two grave robberies that had happened probably not long after the interment. Carter himself wrote about the experience of the discovery. At first, I could see nothing, the hot air escaping from the chamber, causing the candle flame to flicker. But presently, as my eyes grew accustomed to the light, details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist. Strange animals, statues, and gold everywhere, the glints of gold. In fact, it was to take eight years of painstaking work to clear the tomb. The mystery of Tutankhamun has remained the cause of the pharaoh's premature death. And since some 3,400 years have passed since the boy pharaoh was entombed, it's no easy task for even the most advanced science at our disposal in the 21st century to come up with answers to this conundrum. Over the years since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, there has been no shortage of theories about the strange, unexplained death of this young man. After all, you would expect that a king would enjoy the best care that could be offered in his era. So what was it that killed him? Theories about the cause of his death have included murder, with Tutankhamun falling victim to political assassination, 
However, no compelling evidence has been uncovered to support this theory. More plausibly, it's been theorized by some that he might have died in an accident, perhaps a chariot crash, or has even been surmised that he might have been killed by an angry hippo. But a virtual autopsy carried out in 2014 for the BBC came up with a different answer. The post-mortem was carried out by analyzing some 2,000 CAT scans that had been taken of Tutankhamun's mummy in 2006. Added to this was evidence gained by analyzing DNA. The CAT scans show that Tutankhamun had suffered a break in his leg. Subsequently, this fracture had become badly infected, an affliction that even royalty could not escape 3,400 years ago. And the researchers also discovered that Tutankhamun had a club foot. On top of that, Tutankhamun suffered some unpleasant diseases, as the scientists discovered from the DNA analysis. It turned out that he had contracted malaria. Furthermore, he was also a victim of Kohler disease, a painful and rare condition that affects the bones. The genetic evidence also backed up the idea that the young pharaoh's parents were siblings. Egyptologist Gail Gibson, a consultant on the BB program, told History.com, we have to give up the idea that he was a healthy young prince riding across the desert in his chariot or that he was at war and killed by an enemy. What we're looking at is a young man who was not in good health and had a pretty sad life in a lot of respects. So did Tutankhamun die from a mixture of infirmities and diseases, his healthy fatality compromised by the habitual inbreeding of his royal ancestors? Some scientists are unconvinced. Egyptologist Bob Breyer of Long Island University, New York is one skeptic. It's a very difficult thing to get DNA out of ancient bodies. Most of us in the field are a little hesitant to say this is right, Breyer told History.com. So Tutankhamun, it seems, is yet to reveal all of his secrets.